Legendary Muscle Cars, what could be more beautiful? Good day, dear subscribers and visitors of my channel. In the last video I talked about such a kind of auto as hot rods, and casually mentioned the muscle cars. And here came this question please tell about the most muscle. Here is a small review on this topic. So what is a muscle car? Once there is the word car, it immediately tells us that we will talk about the car. But where are the oil? Ask some. No, oil is not the issue here, if you remember, oil on English oil. The classic meaning of oil car, a medium-sized car, from the point of view of the Americans, rear wheel drive, mainly with two-door body, sometimes four-door, and eight-cylinder engine that is in front and taken from a larger machine. The main parameter is the ratio of mass and power that was less than 6 kilograms per horsepower. The important point was that with all this, it was quite roomy and not very expensive, because mostly these cars were bought by young people. The word muscle car, muscle car rose already at the sunset of the popularity of such cars, in the late 70s, the term was coined by collectors of such cars. At one time, from 1964 to the mid-70s, they were deservedly called supercars and were the main in the production lines at three automobile factories giants in the United States, General Motors, Chrysler, and Ford Motor Company. The parent of the genre can be called deservedly John DeLorean of Pontiac, he offered to put the most powerful engine, with a volume of 6.4 liters on an inexpensive car coupe Pontiac Tempest. Thus appeared Pontiac GTO and with it the arms race between automakers. The idea of such a powerful and at the same time inexpensive car rose, probably, in the 50s, with the advent of hot rods. Also, in many ways, the rapid development was facilitated by the low price of fuel, which became cheaper every year until October 17, 1973, there was an oil crisis. The flow of green at that time just started and was not as influential as it is now, and for the safety of transport then not particularly worried. Thus, the whole world was able to see these large, powerful and at the same time poorly controlled cars, which over the years became more and more powerful. They chased oil cars all the time and everywhere, on oval tracks, on winding roads, on the streets between cafes and in a straight line for a quarter of a mile. To make it clear, then a gallon of gasoline, 3.8 liters, cost about 26.30 cents. For decades this madness muscle cars have increased in power with 200-300 horsepower up to 400-500 and this is the only production cars that were frequently in the hands of young people. The climax was the release in 1970 of the literally racing car Plymouth Superbird that had a huge wing on the trunk. All this in order to pass the procedure for taking part in NASCAR competitions. It is no secret that to reduce the cost of production designer used archaic suspension with brakes from not-so-powerful auto, family sedans and station wagons. As a result, insurance companies calculated the number of car crashes involving young muscle car drivers, and came up with terrifying statistics. The consequence was an increase in the rate of insurance of powerful cars. In addition, in the early 70s of the U.S. government suddenly introduced strict environmental standards in connection with carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, which is why automakers had to significantly reduce engine power. The last straw was the oil crisis, and a year and a half later, the demand for muscle care came to naught. This is not surprising, because few people wanted to have a car with a huge consumption of expensive fuel and insurance premiums which are comparable to the cost of the car. Came the era of compact, but powerful and economical cars. So here goes. If you have any questions, please ask, I will try to answer them. This is goodbye, peace to your home, rest and see.